Hello, Leo gang, Leo sun, moon rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. This will be your April monthly reading, so we're going to split it in two. We're going to do half about like love, relationships, romance. It could even be sort of family dynamics. And then the second half will do money, career, finances, anything regarding um, your financial health, wealth, and happiness. <laughs> So uh, this will be a general reading for my Leo gang. Of course, anyone is welcome into this reading. I just ask you come in with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to learn something, maybe better yourself. If the messages that come through in this reading don't resonate with you, feel free to push them aside. Um, they may resonate for you at a later date, so you may choose to uh, revisit the reading at another time. Uh, tarot messages will sometimes make more sense in the future, so again, just encouraging you all to be open to that. Um, but also use your own discernment and um, intuition to separate the messages that you feel are meant for you. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance, so just keep that in mind. All right, Leo, one more card and we'll hop into your tarot reading, I'll try and get you some helpful, insightful messages here. So let me see where this is going, and I'm not sure if this is going to be regarding money or love first, but some of you, I see yourself uh, throwing a lot of time and energy into a career that involves healing and giving back. You may just be spending a lot of time uh, giving, again, your time and energy to charity or almost like... Uh, it's almost like you're paying off a uh, karmic debt, but you're enjoying the process of it. it you're, you're somehow able to give more of yourself at this time. Um, and, and it may involve kind of rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty. You may actually be doing physical labor. You might be building houses or sorting through, you know, canned goods or doing some sort of charity type. Um, I don't know what to call it. Um, charity type project for lack of a better word um and i almost think it's for a lot of you it is in response to dealing with your own grief so i i see this both ways some of you it's like rather than get too caught up in your own feelings and headspace of something that was disappointing or, or a recent loss of something you're like you know what i'm not going to let that stop me i'm just going to get out in the world and do my thing and and again really help those in need that's a really beautiful energy and i actually do like it i almost think you're using this sort of uh, momentum uh, to, to, again, put good here on the earth in this lifetime, right? The only thing I would caution you is make sure you're not just throwing a Band-Aid on your, on your wounds, right? Because ultimately, you know, if we don't do the proper healing work and sort of acknowledge the problem and work to find resolution or, um, you know, be solution-oriented, sometimes those triggers or those wounds will, will sneak back up on you at a later time. So I don't do fear-based readings, right? That has nothing to do with, like, you know, a threat or a warning. It's just... I think there's balance here that, that needs that needs to be considered. By all means, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and get out there and, and do something that focuses your mind and your attention on something positive that makes you feel good. Helping others who, who are grieving or going through a difficult time, that's a wonderful way to build back up your strength, and you seem to be doing that. With judgment following the Five of Cups, though, I do think there's going to be at some point in time, and maybe it's just when you're comfortable doing it, a revisitation and sort of this final decluttering or clearing out of, of some maybe lingering emotions or memories, some feelings that are still leaving you kind of ooh, a little bit sensitive, right? Um, a little bit touchy. Um, and this might be regarding someone you were uh, romantically involved with or dating, particularly another fire sign, maybe a Scorpio. It doesn't have to be. Um, and it's possible to, I'm just sort of getting the idea of someone maybe not being as faithful as they could have been. Um, and I, I don't know, for some of you, and this isn't like the happiest message, I still see that person trying to return to you. So maybe um, spending some time away from this person will allow you to kind of build up your strength, kind of go into warrior mode, and really decide for yourself. Not because I'm telling you or because some other random tarot reader told you, but for some of you, it seems like you might sort of be developing a better strategy to hold yourself accountable for the boundaries you say you're going to set, but maybe you falter every now and then right maybe this person gets the best of you and you know they, they come at you with sort of this uh subtle sort of emotional manipulation of oh but i miss you so much and take me back a lot of you are finally like giving it the final whistle blow you're finally getting 
aligned. It's like you're finally hearing the calling of this person just keeps disappointing you. So what do you choose to do with that person moving forward, right? It doesn't have to be as severe as that's it, never speaking again, kicking them out of their uh, kicking kicking them out of my life or, you know, closing off ties with them. For some of you, it it might be that. Others of you, you're again holding yourself more accountable for setting healthier boundaries so that you don't find yourself disappointed by this person anymore. Others of you, it's not so much a change in distance. It's about catering your expectation of what you're going to get from this person. You know, I, I think that's a common thing we hear too is, you know, the best way to to preserve and protect your happiness and your, your energy, your lightheartedness is to have pretty much zero expectation of anything or anyone just to invest in yourself, right? And I don't mean that in a selfish way, but again, giving to people, you know, time and time again, very generous and they're not being any sort of meeting you in the middle or I don't necessarily mean like payback, but you understand what I mean? And more specifically in a romantic relationship, I'm not talking about your charity work or your projects. Ironically, though, I'm I sort of think looking at this too, the idea of charity work, some of you, that message didn't land for you. And the reason is this relationship, this romantic relationship is being explain to you as if it were a charity case. It's like, oh, well, I feel bad for them and they're going through a hard time and, you know, their last girlfriend broke their heart. But again, where's the reciprocity? Where is this person meeting you in the middle? Um, it's, it's almost like metaphorically you're giving to a charity case in, in the romance department. That's for some of you. Of course, that's not for all of you. Um, I think you're going to have a final awakening about sort of a player energy. Um, someone who, I, I don't know, they, they're there when it's convenient, but when times get tough, it, it's like they're nowhere to be found and you're left to sort of, you know, heal your own wounds. And I, I just don't love that energy. I, I think you can find someone who who respects you more, who treats you better. Um, yeah, let's. Yeah, let's let's do a new one. I think that's kind of that. That's one message from my Leos. Um, let's do another one. Let's talk about love. And for some of you, there might just be uh, needing to find more balance in your personal life versus your work life. If you're putting a lot of extra hours in at work. Again, nothing wrong with that, but you can't pour from an empty cup. You know, your body is your temple. So make sure you are, are respecting your own personal limits in terms of uh, being able to wake up and, and do it again the next day. Some of you need to set healthier boundaries of, okay, I, I really am going to, you know, punch out at, at 6 or 6.30 or whatever time it is, right? Um, being cognizant of your own boundaries and your own limits. And, and it's good to live within limits sometimes, right? I know that sounds really constrictive and oppressive, but depending on the scenario, it's actually making more time for for healthier lifestyle patterns. So, all right. Assessments. I feel like maybe this is pointing out sexual tension. Uh, let's, let's see. Possibly with an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You're, you're definitely thinking about this person. Um, and considering communication or, or how to move forward with more communication. Seven of Cups. Okay, so this person has like a very dreamy, uh, lovely, fluid energy about them, especially the way they speak. They're a wonderful storyteller. They're very charismatic. And I almost get the idea of kind of like dreamy, crushy type feelings, um, This, especially with a Libra, but it could, it could be any sign, especially someone who has strong air, though. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So what's this between them? I almost think this is who's going to make the first move. Um, it seems like there's been like a little bit of flirting or a little bit back and forth, but it's like you both fold under pressure when it comes to initiating, like, you know, asking them out or, or the first date or something like that. Tell me a little bit more. Oh, four of wands. Cute. Cute coupling. And the chariot. All right. So the chariot is a card of victory. Um, it, this person kind of feels like home, uh, and it, I, this doesn't necessarily have to be going on in the workplace, but there's something very familiar to you about this person. It could be that you were soulmates in a past life. Um, you could have some Cancerian energy coming into you during Aries season, uh, which we are in now. Um, this person may invite you over to their house, and it's almost like revealing more, more layers to them. As you get to know them, there's... Yeah, it's like there's there's more layers stripped back and you, you start to see more than just kind of like the witty banter. You're starting to understand this person on, on like a deeper soul level. Um, 
this is really cute, you guys. You might even be invited to a mutual wedding, like a mutual friend of yours might be getting married. And and I, I don't know what the circumstance would be. Maybe it's, again, like office coworkers or something, and you guys are invited to the wedding. There's some, if it's not a wedding, there's some event or celebration or party or kind of after hours thing, if it is work related, where you guys sort of get to talk on a more intimate level in like a more private space. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a flame with sexual energy. I, I think it's just nice. It feels interesting. It feels magnetic. It feels kind of cozy. Um, and so if you choose to go down this road, it, it actually seems like there's a lot of potential there. Someone here is sort of questioning it's sort of I'm getting sort of like oh my gosh am I crazy like I thought they were flirting with me but I don't know and like what if I'm wrong and I ruined the relationship I think both people are in their head but for for kind of different reasons is there anything else I need to tell Leo about this do something active on your first date. Uh, there's something with, with like a, a small competitive spirit in this person. Something about that kind of brings out their flirtation or or it puts them at ease. It makes them more comfortable to have some sort of like physical activity to do with you. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you're going jogging or hiking or rollerblading or <laughs> some of you guys are like sex. I mean, I guess I don't you know, up to you. I guess that is physical activity. Yeah. OK, so I think I actually think the death card here is positive. I think there's going to be transformation into like this friend zone or this, you know, I think he or she likes me, but I'm not sure. I think this is transitioning into something much deeper. We have to remember Scorpio is like a very deep, deep, you know, emotionally committed and loyal sign for the most part, right? I mean, not saying every Scorpio is like that, but uh, it is a card of transformation and transition. So I think this is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Um, again, a lot of water in this person's chart or air. So Scorpio, Cancer, maybe some Pisces too. Um, there's almost like psychic communication going on too, or we don't even have to call it that. Just the idea of you sort of, you have a pulse on each other. Like before this person speaks, you kind of know what they're going to say. You know what to say to kind of like, um, get them to laugh or like, I'm hearing sort of like tickle their funny bone. I know that's a stupid expression. <laughs> it's a cringe, right? Tickle their funny bone. But you know what I mean? It, there's, yeah, there's just, there's like a cuteness to this. I kind of like it. It might literally involve a Scorpio. Um, some of you, there could be, um, I don't want to say third party because that's going to give you the wrong idea. That's not what I'm getting here. I'm almost getting the idea of someone else peering in on the two of you. I'm getting two messages. You may have to choose between people, and one of those people vying for your attention is definitely a Scorpio. If that's not it, this is someone in the same social group or network as you two, and in a really, like, kind of cute, adorable way. This feels like out of a rom-com. This person senses the, like, chemistry or, you know, whatever, sexual tension between you, and they're just, like, rolling their eyes in the corner, like, oh, my God, get a room already. Like, everyone knows it but you two. It's like nobody here wants to take the emotional risk to commit to this or, or admit feelings, really, is what I'm trying to say, because, you know, oh, my gosh, how, what I don't want to risk it. I don't want to gamble the friendship. But it's like everybody knows, like, the, you know, Scorpio, a very psychic energy. They're just like, well, you two just get it over with already. And again, this Scorpio could be a very good friend of yours, right? You know, this this is not evil or bad energy by any means, but there's someone else watching this go down and like the writing is on the wall. Like th like this person may pull you aside and be like, make a move. Like, what are you waiting for? They're clearly interested in you. <laughs> Maybe this is me. I have some Scorpio on my chart. I got a Scorpio moon. <laughs> anyway, this feels cute. This feels lovely. I really like that one. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's move on to career and finances. Let's see what we can get for Leo. <clears throat> Oh, let's see. I can't wait to have my, my tarot cards back. I, uh, <laughs> I've been separated from most of them temporarily. I'm just going off like a couple decks here and like, they're great decks, but like I've been using them so much, like I'm ready to mix it up again. So I'm like, ah, here we go with the same decks over and over, but oh well, it's okay. I don't want to hate on them. They're good. They're, they're helping me. <laughs> they're giving me the good energy. So we'll do it. Here we go for Leo, career, money, and finances. <clears throat> oh, that, that actually may be a message in itself. Something about variety. <laughs> Some of you are getting bored or 
complacent or there's just like I, I need to spice it up I need to mix it up I want to try something different or I almost think that you you're at a place in your job or your role where like you've accomplished most of the challenges and it feel it feels a little bit like you're plateauing I don't think that you're not interested in what you're doing but you're well actually let me rephrase that I think you want more I think you're thirsty for more knowledge or opportunities but some of you feel like you've you've maxed out on the growth of the role. So a lot of you need to speak to your boss about other opportunities. <clears throat> Transition. There you go. The death card again. Possibly, again, a, a Scorpio energy coming through. Uh, and the idea of rebirth is important here. And strength. There you are. <clears throat> Very interesting strength card. I feel like some of you have to make like a speech or some sort of announcement and you're very nervous about it. I'm sort of getting like, uh, not me personally, but like I'm sort of getting the idea of like sweaty palms or your heart racing or knowing that you, more or less you have the you have the stage or you have the microphone and, and everyone's just like kind of crickets waiting to hear what you're going to say or do. I, I don't know what that's about, but there's a lot of anticipation for for what action you're going to take. Interesting. Judgment again. So closing out old cycles. You may have gotten an offer for another job opportunity and you may have told a few people or I, I will say this too. If, if you have been offered another role and you haven't mentioned it or parted ways with your current uh, position or company team, whatever, I would be very careful who you share that news with because there's uh, there's a lot of people talking, like whispering and, and, and spreading news that isn't theirs to share. So, yeah, I would be careful uh, about who you're trusting with. So, you know, I say confidential more or less, but information about you looking for jobs because you might find yourself in a tricky situation where somebody calls you out and then your boss finds out or and again not the end of the world but it makes for like a really awkward transition and an awkward exit that doesn't necessarily have to be just keep your cards close to your chest is what i would recommend there i also see two people fighting to have you on their team and it feels like yeah, it's like both these people want to work with you, but for some reason there's a decision to be made and you're kind of monkey in the middle. I think you're having trouble deciding because you you see it both ways. Each each person, or, or we can even call it an opportunity, each opportunity offers you something different. A lot of Scorpio energy here, and that's funny, a lot of Leo energy too, so you may have an opportunity to collaborate with another Leo. <clears throat> Honestly, guys, they both kind of look good to me. You have the sun coming up here, clarifying judgment. Um, and then you have the two of cups, which to me says a lot about compatibility and similarity or or vibing with this person uh, quite well with, with this death card over here. So I'll say this. It's possible that one opportunity is something very new and you would essentially, I'm hearing the term like have to like burn away what you've done up until this point like and what i mean by that is like you really you may have to start from scratch like you might be new you might have to you know have a whole new skill set or a new schedule or a new location like there's something very different about this opportunity um but if that's what you're looking for that could be quite exciting again two of cups is lovely energy over here it's almost like the revival of something you used to do that used to make you very happy, but you might be questioning uh, if, if you're ready to go back into that. Some of you, I'm sort of hearing the idea of like, well, that feels like I've already done that chapter, so why would I go back and redo it? This could also be, you know, if, if you've given notice, someone may counter offer to pay you more because they're trying to keep you. So, Leo, I will say you tend, you seem to be in a very... Um, good position it seems like people are like fighting or to work with you or or really really trying to negotiate to get you to stay yeah i honestly it, it's really similar the messages again the the four of cups to me is 
it's playing it safe in a sense, but sometimes there's nothing wrong with that. If, if you enjoy that and there is opportunity for growth, I, I'll say the Four of Cups, it's what's familiar, it's what's comfortable. Um, and maybe all you need to get reinvigorated for some of you, not all of you, is just knowing that, okay, they're going to pay you a little bit more. Or, you know, they're, they're actively going to be seeking out opportunities to promote you now that you've made it clear, like, hey, like, I'm, I'm on the fence of leaving here, right? This one with the Empress, I think it opens new doors. I think there would be new people to work with, new people to network with. I think the pay would be higher on the new opportunity. And so that that makes sense to me that maybe the old one or the current one, it's like they're, they're realizing like they don't want to lose you. So they're trying to keep you warm. They're trying to keep you interested. I mean, my gut reaction, if it comes down to these energies, I would rather take the Empress over the Four of Cups. But again, it depends on a lot of details and circumstances that only you would know out there um and and i know that's probably frustrating to hear because you're like oh but what do i do i mean let's uh let's pull an oracle card and see if that clarifies anything for you um actually i'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw a keyword on each of these two just to kind of see change i love it <laughs> know when to move to a new shell especially if yours no longer fits thank you spirit that's awesome and then anything over here there is something glamorous about what they're offering you. It, it leaves you starry-eyed here. And then self-care, drowning doesn't always require water. Interesting. So it's possible that, that this position is trying to offer you more, but with that, do you have the time and energy to take on more? Or is it really just a matter of you need to pay me more, right? Because those are two different conversations. So make sure you're not getting used and abused in this scenario. Make sure they're not taking you for granted or overworking you under under the guise of, oh, well, you asked for more responsibility. You know, make sure it's very clear what it is that you're looking for in, in the current or the older opportunity. Let's, uh, let's pull you an angel card. This is called the Indigo Angel Oracle Cards. Uh, and I say that because they mention the word indigo a lot, and I guess it's in reference to this idea of being indigo angels. So, <clears throat> One of these opportunities may be connected to a best friend or a sibling. Uh, like someone may have submitted your resume or passed your name along or told you about an opportunity. Um, you might be feeling excited because uh, there could be an opening to work at a company that you already have a friend working at. So the, again, that sort of sweetens the deal for some of you. <clears throat> but yeah, you have two very powerful people who are interested in you. Or powerful opportunities, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be people, but, you know, opportunities, projects, whatever you want to say it. Dreams. And this one's kind of sticking out, too. You are not alone. Let's see what the book has to say about these. <clears throat> dreams. This card guides you to pay attention to the dreams you have, both when you sleep and during your waking hours. They are your connection to your true, fearless indigo soul and your highest potential. This card is a message to let yourself fearlessly dream, even if the contents of your dream seem unrealistic or, uh, I'm sorry, seem unrealistic to your logical mind. The angels are asking you to strengthen this connection to your higher self so that you can bring into your life the miracles you've always desired. Yeah, so maybe this isn't about playing it safe. Maybe this is about taking a chance on on what's always been a dream. If if a door of opportunity opens up, I want to say you you might be silly not to walk through it. You know, assess it by all means. But you, I think you already know the answer to this in your heart. It's it's just sort of again that logical mind kind of chiming in of oh, but you know what if what about all these things that could go wrong? And again, like glass half full. What about all the things that could go right? I, honestly, Leo, you have very strong cards. The only thing I, I see sort of being an issue is Four of Cups. Playing it safe or sticking to what is familiar, is that a sacrifice for you? And and if, if, if that does come into it, what outweighs the fact that, okay, well, I've kind of done this and I don't love it, but again, what is that dot, dot, dot? Like maybe there is something that makes that okay and, and you're good with it, but really, really think about that. And then you are not alone. Sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
As you grow older, you'll realize that no one is on no one on this planet truly knows what he or she is doing. We all just uh, we are all just getting by as best we can. This card reminds you that you've got plenty of help and companionship available to you. Never before have so many people come into a lifetime with the shared divine purpose of rewriting the script for daily human life. Your indigo mission is so very important. There are literally millions of other indigos in the world having very similar experiences. Ask the angels to help guide you to the like-minded people who you can relate to. It will soon become apparent to you that you are an integral part of one of the most significant movements in human history. Ooh, that, that's, that felt profound. That felt big. Interesting. So yeah, it, it is about finding your tribe, finding, you know, like-minded individuals who are, you know, share the same passion and joy and enthusiasm that, that you do and, and, you know, possibly how that translates in, in, into, into a job or into your career. All right, cool guys. I think I'm going to leave you with that. You had a pretty kick-ass reading this month, so I hope you're I hope you're enjoying fiery airy season. Hopefully, see, uh, I will see you very soon again on YouTube for more tarot. Um, so until then, take care, Leo. Bye.